As we do our transition from first order differential equations into higher order differential equations, we pass by a particular topic that I think it's worth us to pause for just a moment and talk about. If nothing else, for our edification to understand, hey, what does a computer do with differential equations that it can't solve? Because, you know, if we can't solve them, maybe a computer can with a lot better tools, but even a computer can't solve everything. So what does it do? What does it do? So that's what I want to talk about for just a couple of minutes. To begin, let's go back and remind ourselves about something we talked about previously, which is called slope fields. Now, we did this example before. We said, hey, suppose you have the differential equation y prime equals sine of y minus cosine of x. This is kind of a hopeless differential equation. Hopeless. We're just not going to be able to make good progress in solving it explicitly. But what we can do is we can generate the slope field. Now, recall what's going on. Well, let's suppose I, I pick a starting point. Now, yeah, suppose I pick here. So there's my starting point. Well, what the slope field does is it says, draw the tangent line at that point. Now, we can draw the tangent line because we know that point, all right? And the other thing we need for a line is we need the slope of the line. Well, that's the derivative. And since I know the x and y coordinate, I can say, all right, I know what the slope is at that point. So it's like, oh, I have that tangent line at that point. So I can take that tangent line, that little piece there, and then I can think about, Okay, that's what the function looks like nearby. So we can think of, okay, we extend it. And then as we move over, we say, oh, now say, all right, we have more information about our tangent line. And uh, we can follow what the tangent line is doing to help us understand how the function behaves over time. So in other words, we say, look, start, move a little bit, look at what the slope is doing there, move a little bit, and repeat, repeat, repeat. Now, we're doing this with, you know, eyeballing it in, and we say, okay, well, depending upon where we start, we get different pictures. So you can imagine, well, I, I start over here. We say, okay, well, look, we're coming up, we're leveling off, we're coming down, we're leveling off again. Of course, in the other direction, what's happening? Well, we're coming down, but then we seem to level off, and go up a little bit, but then possibly level, and so forth and so on. So we can do this for any starting point. What we want to do is say, okay, what's the actual machinery? How do computers do this? What's the process? And once we understand that, we say, oh, okay. It's not so unreasonable to get approximations. All right, so that's what we want to talk about. How would a computer go about getting an approximation to a solution to a differential equation? Now, we're going to emphasize these are numerical approximations, which means inherently there's errors that are built into it. So what's the idea? So the idea, and this dates back to a mathematician who shows up a lot. He was a very prolific mathematician, and his name was Euler. Now, I have to tell you, the first time I learned about the mathematician, I was reading. And I was like, okay, EU. I heard about Euclid, but I hadn't heard about this mathematician before. So I thought, oh, this is Euler. Well, whoops. <laughs> so it happens, lots of mathematicians from all over the place. Uh, so it's pronounced like Euler, O-I-L-E-R, Euler. And uh, amazing mathematician. I mean, just absolutely prolific. He uh, would uh, write mathematics almost like nonstop child bouncing on his knee in one arm, hand doing computations in the other, and uh, he even went blind. It didn't stop him. He still kept doing mathematics, and he opened up lots of new fields in mathematics. So what was the idea that Euler had? Well, it's essentially what we just talked about. Just sort of said, look, let's just say what we're actually doing. So here's the philosophy. It says, all right, we're going to start at some point x0, and then we're just going to keep moving. x1, x2, x3, so forth, until we get to some stopping point. So in other words, I, I want to know what happens if I start at x0 and I move to xn. So we're thinking of this as our stopping point, and this is our ending point. And so we're taking this and we're chopping it into pieces. 
Now, why? Well, the goal here is by chopping it into pieces, we can say, look, instead of trying to find that continuous curve, we'll just say, look, we'll approximate it over each part. So, in particular, there was perhaps some x0, and here's some y0. So, this is our initial point. All right, so the idea. Well, the idea is to say we know that initial point, and therefore, we know the tangent line at that initial point. So it's something. And now, what we say is to understand what happens at the next point, was we'll just replace the function with the tangent line. So in other words, it's like we're doing a straight line approximation to our function. And then we say, OK, now we're over to our x1. OK, and now at some point as well, some point y1. And all right, there's some tangent line here. And to get to our next point, we say follow that tangent line and repeat. So what's happening is we're just doo, 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 following, making our straight line segments as we move along. OK, so how does it work? All right, well, the idea so where we have a start, which is at an x0, y0. And then we have a step. And the goal of the step is how do I go from some pair xi, yi to the next point xi plus 1, yi plus 1. All right, so we just think about the setup. Now, what's our setup? We have a point, and we say, OK, here's this x, i, y, i. This is a, a point on our tangent line. And we say, all right, what's our slope? Well, our slope is going to be f of x, i, y, i. And I should say, what we're doing is this is the y prime equals f of x, y. I forgot to mention that at the start. But, all right, so we have our point, we have our slope, so we have our tangent line. So, in particular, we can say that y is equal to y sub i plus the slope f of xi yi times x minus xi. So this is a point slope we're in, in a slightly different way. The only thing that really is different is instead of writing as y minus yi equals slope times x minus xi, I just move the yi across. All right. Well, in particular, we say, OK, so now what we can do is we say our yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus f of xi yi times xi plus 1 minus xi. So in other words, you know, I have my my point and my slope, and I follow it, and to get my next y coordinate, I go to my next x coordinate. And uh, that's the key step. And where do we stop? Well, the answer is we, we stop when we've reached uh, our xm, right? When we reached as far as we want to go. Okay, that's it. That's the whole idea. Now, a couple of notes. Uh, you might say, is this what computers do? And I will say there are ways that you can improve on this, but in spirit, yes, this is, this is what happens. We say, look, how do we go from one point to the next point? And uh, how do we get a good approximation for the local behavior? And we can follow that to get to our next point. How do we get better approximations? Well, you see, there's some sort of, we've discretized. In other words, we've taken our interval and we've chopped it up. Well, if we have big chunks, then we're saying, oh, that tangent line has to be an approximation over a larger range. And the better approximations come when the tangent line has shorter ranges to deal with. So, no surprise, we say, look, for a better approximation, we are going to do smaller intervals. So the smaller you make your intervals, 
then what happens is that the closer the actual function mimics the tangent line. Now, another thing we should say about error is that errors tend to accumulate. So, what does that mean? Well, my error might be smaller initially, but because I have error into this point, that causes error in even the slope. And so we say, okay, so you'll see that error does tend to accumulate more. You can bound the error, of course, if you are careful, but of course, small intervals helps you reduce the error. And uh, how do you make small intervals? Well, it's more computations. And this is all highly computational. And so at the end of the day, what we end up doing is we get a series of points that we can put together and make our function, which gives us a, a good approximation for what the function is doing. And oftentimes, good enough. Because when we're interested in, say, engineering applications, we have some tolerance built in. We say, look, we just need to know it over some certain range with a modest amount of error, and we can actually guarantee that as long as we're careful. And that's what computers do. So if you have a differential equation you can't solve, we can approximate it numerically by just saying, well, let's follow the tangent lines and do little steps. Do, 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 do. And that'll give us a good sense of what the behavior is doing. All right. Well, good. That was a great little pause. On to our next subject.